Ah, and we back, people. Anaphylactic reactions is what we're talking about today, okay? We at the park, birds chirping, dogs are barking, but it's about to get cold out this bit. All right, let's jump right into the shit. Anaphylactic reaction. The body has a defense mechanism. You got that? It's a defense mechanism. All right. Known as the immune system to fight off invasion by foreign substances. Foreign substances called antigens in particular, uh, including a specific type of antigen called allergens. All right. That's the breakdown. Foreign substances called antigens. A specific type of antigen is an allergen. All right. Um, allergen, allergens or antigens are recognized by the cells of the immune system and eventually destroyed. In most cases, this immune response takes place with no allergic reaction or with just a mild allergic reaction, all right? Little to no activity, meaning. Occasionally, there is a severe life-threatening anaphylactic reaction. That's what we get into. Pathophysiology of an anaphylactic reaction. An antigen can enter the body through the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, or the respiratory tract. When one does, it sets off an immune response in which wait, wait, oh, in which the immune system detects the antigen and produces antibodies. All right. Antibodies are produced to kill the antigens, all right, by the immune system. Antibodies are proteins that search for the antigen, combine with it, and help to destroy it. That's some that's some wild shit right there, man. You got a hell of a hell of a we got a hell of a body systems, man. This shit is amazing. Hell anyway, most antigens that enter the body are easily fought off by the immune system with no allergic response, that is, without producing any noticeable effects. If, however, the type of antigen called an allergen enters the body, the effect is quite different. Although allergens are often quite common and harmless to most individuals, they cause an abnormal response by the immune system known as an allergic response. Ah, allergens cause allergic responses. You got that? Aller and aller is all the same. All right. Allergen, allergic response, allergic, you get an allergic reaction from an allergen. Got that? Got it. An allergic reaction is a misdirected and excessive response by the immune system to an allergen. The immune system overestimates the danger of the allergen and produces a greater than necessary response. It's calling all troops on deck. The response can be local, that is, a response isolated to one area of the body or it can be systemic, that is, producing effects throughout the body. The response of the immune system to an allergen is often rapid, leading to the sudden onset of the allergic reaction. The allergen itself is usually harmless to the patient, and most allergic reactions are mild, producing nothing more than discomfort such as itching, a runny nose, and watery eyes. Results of the body's attempts to eliminate the allergen or antigen is trying to get rid of it. So your nose is running, of course, getting it out of there. Watery eyes is trying to get it out of there. You're scratching your skin, trying to get it off your skin or out of your pores, I guess, too. Occasionally, however, there go that however, a severe life-threatening immune response occurs. Such a severe life-threatening allergic reaction is known as an dun, 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 anaphylactic reaction. And is also known as anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. What do these three things have in common? You guessed it, the word anaphyl, basically, okay? You know, it's that easy. Anaphylactic reaction and is also known as anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. Bada bing, bada boom, babe. In an anaphylactic reaction, the entire body is affected by the release of chemical substances by the immune system. These chemical substances produce life-threatening reactions in the airway. One, lungs. Two, blood vessels. Three, and heart. Four, all right? Uh, swelling in the upper airway can cause obstruction and a reduction of air to the lungs. Bronchoconstriction and swelling in the lower airways can cause severe breathing difficulty and possible hypoxia. Blood vessels dilate and capillaries begin to leak, decreasing the blood pressure and causing shock. 
An increase in mucus production leads to a further restriction of air movement, increased airway resistance, and the potential for plugging of smaller bronchioles. Man, that's tragic. An anaphylactic reaction is a life-threatening condition that requires prompt recognition and intervention and commonly leads to death without proper treatment. That's some real shit, man. Anaphylactic reaction is real, too. All right. Sensitization. Sensitization. An allergic reaction usually does not occur the first time the body is exposed to and produces antibodies against a particular antigen. However, that word, however, during that first exposure, a condition known as hypersensitivity develops, which means that at some subsequent point, time when the person is again exposed to that same antigen an allergic reaction will occur this process of developing hypersensitivity on first exposure to an antigen is known as sensitization in some cases an anaphylactoid reaction can occur the first time an antigen is introduced into the body this type of reaction will be discussed in the next section whatever this is how sensitization works when an antigen is introduced into the body. The body recognizes it as a foreign or non-self substance and forms antibodies to fight off the antigen. The antibodies attach themselves to two types of cells in the body, mast cells and basophils. What type of cells do the antibodies attach themselves to inside of the body? I hope you got it right. Basophils and mast cells, all right? The antibody, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 the antibodies attach themselves to two types of cells in the body, mast cells and basophils, because they're trying to fight off the antigen, okay? Uh, Most cells are located in connective tissue and are concentrated around the heart, lungs, and vessels, I said most. Mast cells, all right? One of the two that the antibodies attach themselves to. Mast, mast cells are located in connective tissue and are concentrated around the heart, lungs, and vessels. Basophils, the other type of cell that the antibody attaches itself to, are immature mast cells that circulate in the blood. Hmm. The antibody may stay attached to the mast cells and basophils for minutes, days, weeks, months, or years. Damn. As long as the antibody is attached, the patient is said to be sensitized to the substance that generated the antibodies. Wow. That's poetry, baby. That shit deep. Okay. Okay. I can dig that. I get it. That's how. That's how. Because it basically... Basically, that stuff becomes a part of you, so you're not allergic to it anymore. I ain't, wow, breaking that shit down, man. Once sensitization occurs, the patient is primed for a possible anaphylactic reaction. It may take several exposures to a foreign substance over a long period of time. For example, you may encounter a patient who had eaten crab meat for years without any noticeable reaction. I've seen that before. But his consumption of crab on this occasion produce an anaphylactic reaction and a call to EMS. Because of such variations in sensitization, it is difficult to predict who is at risk of developing an anaphylactic reaction. However, man, if this however is in every damn section we go to. However, once a patient has had an anaphylactic reaction, it should be assumed, be careful with that, put some, put some quotations around that shit, it should be assumed that he will react in a similar fashion to another exposure to the same antigen. It's safe to assume that, but what if they don't? You know, that's basically like throwing another however in there. I mean, shit, you can't assume any damn thing. When the antigen is reintroduced into the body, it attaches to the antibodies that are now located on the mast cells and basophils. Let me read that again because I kind of got lost in that. When the antigen is reintroduced into the body, it attaches to the antibodies that are now located oh, okay, on the mast cells and basophils. 
The mast and basophil cell membranes break down and release chemical substances referred to as chemical mediators. They mediators. They're about to go hash this shit out. Let's chop it up. These chemical mediators then cause a cascade of events to occur that can lead to specific signs and symptoms and the life-threatening condition of anaphylaxis. Oh, well, they're they more than mediators. They're like, we finna handle this shit right now. The primary chemical mediator released from the mast cells and basophils is histamine. Histamine is not fucking around out here. Histamine causes bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, and an increase in capillary permeability or leakage. Yeah, histamine, the, uh, histamine is causing the anaphylactic reaction. Damn. As our histamine uh, need to calm the fuck down sometimes, but as already noted, the life-threatening responses that are directly produced from the release of the chemical mediators or are bronchoconstriction, increase in capillary permeability, and vasodilation. These produce the signs and symptoms seen in anaphylaxis. If the bronchoconstriction, increase in capillary permeability, and vasodilation can be reversed, the life-threatening condition and the signs and symptoms will be reversed. So you need to find a way to try to calm histamine fuck down. And then, you know, everything will be all right. Anaphylactoid reaction. In some reactions, the chemical mediators can be released from the mast cells and basophils the first time the antigen is introduced into the body without the patient ever being sensitized. The antigen itself causes the release of the chemical mediators. This reaction, where no sensitization is required, is referred to as is referred to as <laughs> as an anaphylactoid reaction. The body's responses. Bronchoconstriction, increased capillary permeability and vasodilation. You know, the body's responses, you know that already. Uh, and the signs and symptoms are exactly the same as for a true anaphylactic reaction. Thus, the treatment is exactly the same. So I call it something different. I don't even... This reaction where no... Oh, okay, because it's where no sensitization is required. So no sensitization or no fur, uh, previous... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? No previous previous exposure to the uh, an antigen or whatnot or allergen, then it's an anaphylactoid reaction. But if you already had uh, sensitization, then it's an anaphylactic reaction. All right then. All right. Uh, yeah. Like I say, like, Thus, the treatment is exactly the same. The primary difference when you collect the history from the patient is that he will not have had a previous exposure to the antigen as the patient suffering from a true anaphylactic reaction would have had. That's what I just said, ain't it? Uh-huh. Fuck with me. Uh... For purposes of discussion in this chapter, reference to severe allergic reaction and anaphylactic reaction includes anaphylactoid reaction, since the signs and symptoms and treatment are exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, really, there's no reason to call it something different. I get it, but you just you just create more shit to confuse people. It's just more information I got to store in my damn brain. I might have a fucking anaphylactoid reaction trying to store all this shit. An anaphylactic reaction can be triggered by any of a large number of substances. Substances. The most common cause is medications that are either taken orally or injected. Some cases of anaphylactic reaction are idiopathic, which means that their causes cannot be identified. You get that idio, idiot, you know, path, pathic, anyway. Um, this is a difficult situation for the patient since he does not know what substances may trigger another reaction. Yeah, that's bad. An antigen may enter the body by injection. The substance is introduced directly into the body by bites, stings, needles, or infusions. Ingestion. The patient swallows the substance. Inhalation. The patient breathes the substance into his lungs. Contact or absorption. The antigen is absorbed through the skin. Injection, especially intramuscular or intravenous, meaning it's, you know, some going shot into your muscle or sh into your uh, vein. Injection is the route most often associated with anaphylactic reactions. Penicillin is the most common cause of anaphylactic reactions. Penicillin is the most common cause of anaphylactic reactions. Penicillin is the most common cause of anaphylactic reactions. Some of the common causes of anaphylactic reactions are 
venom from insect bites or stings, especially of wasps, wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, and fire ants. Other bites or stings often causing reactions include those of deer flies, gnats, horse flies, mosquitoes, cockroaches, and miller moths. Damn. Snake and spider venom may also cause an anaphylactic reaction. Foods, including peanuts, other nuts, milk, eggs, shellfish, whitefish, food additives, chocolate, cotton seed oil, and berries. Pollen from plants, especially ragweed and grasses. Medications, including antibiotics, local anesthetics, aspirin, seizure medications, muscle relaxants, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, and vitamins, insulin, and tetanus, and diphtheria toxoids may also produce an anaphylactic reaction. Remember, however, a side effect of a medication is not, is not, is not an allergic reaction to the drug. Remember, however, a side effect of a medication is not an allergic reaction to the drug. Examples given, nausea after codeine administration. All them boys out here sipping on that codeine. So when you see them fucked up, they're not having an allergic reaction, all right? Remember, however, a side effect of a medication is not an allergic reaction. When they're nodding off, it's not an allergic reaction. That shit real. A large number of other substances, such as glue, can produce an anaphylactic reaction. So stop huffing that damn glue. Exercise may accentuate the anaphylactic response when certain foods have been ingested close to the time of exercise. Wow, that's crazy. Exercise may accentuate the anaphylactic response when certain foods have been ingested close to the time of exercise. I guess because you exercise and your blood flowing is probably helping your food move. I don't know. Anyway, latex, most often found in examination gloves and other medical devices. How about condoms, motherfucker? I ain't saying nothing about that. Let's get adult about this shit. Yeah, I mean condoms, condoms, latex. We know what that is. Assessment-based approach to anaphylactic reaction. Because the signs and symptoms of allergic reaction are similar to those for many other medical problems, you may or may not be able to determine that the cause of the problem is an allergic reaction. Here we go. What word, what word coming up? Y'all tell me. You know what it is. However, with a big ass comma after that shit, an anaphylactic reaction should be obvious from its characteristic extreme signs and symptoms. Yeah. So basically, don't assume any damn thing. That's the, th that's the best thing to do out here in these streets. Don't assume anything. You just take every situation for what it is and try to figure it out. But, you know, sometimes you might be wrong. It might be. We are taking a leap here and bam! Management of the airway may require endotracheal intubation. The placement of a tube in the trachea to facilitate breathing in most jurisdictions, this must be performed by an advanced life support team. ALS, ALS. Consider calling for ALS back up the pulse in a patient suffering from an anaphylactic reaction may be weak and rapid. The radial pulse may not be present because of the low blood pressure. Edema or swelling may be obvious in the face, neck, lips, tongue, hands, and feet. The skin may be red and warm, or the patient's skin may be cyanotic from inadequate breathing. You may notice hives, raised, blood, raised red blotches all over the skin, which are hives. Uh, hives are usually accompanied by severe itching. Hives, or Urticaria is another name for hives and itching. Pruritus pru, pruritus pruritus is another name for itching. Are the uh, urticaria and pruritus or hives and itching are the hallmark signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. Some of the most immediately noticeable signs of a severe allergic response. Uh, have the following causes. Rapid and weak pulse results from fluid loss from the permeable and leaking capillaries and from vasodilation, dilation of the blood vessels, which causes a decrease in the blood pressure and perfusion. Warm, flushed skin that is caused by vasodilation, which allows warm, red blood to pool in the vessels in the skin. Hives. 
highs result from capillary permeability and leaking in the epidermis outer layer of the skin, of course. Hives result from capillary permeability and leaking in the epidermis. Edema, swelling uh, of the skin and other tissues such as the lips and tongue. Angioedema or angioneurotic edema is caused by capillary permeability and leaking in the dermis, which is the deeper layer of the skin. So if you see swelling in the skin, I mean in the uh, lips and tongue, angioedema or uh, angioneurotic edema, it is caused by the same thing, capillary permeability and leaking in the dermis this time though, the deeper layer of the skin, all right? Because of the potential seriousness of an anaphylactic reaction and its effects on the airway, lungs, blood vessels, and heart, the patient is considered a priority and should be prepared for immediate transport. If the patient exhibits signs of anaphylactic reaction, that is, respiratory distress and or shock, before leaving the scene, determine if the patient has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector, an EpiPen. Before you leave the scene, determine if the patient has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector. Inquire of relatives or any bystanders if the patient is unresponsive. If he has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector, locate it or them or them if he has more than one. OK, um, immediately. All right. And they got this shit in parentheses. So let me read that again. If he has a prescribed epinephrine auto injector located immediately, basically, and it says in parentheses or them if he has more than one. All right. We about to take another big ass jump and bam, when doing the secondary assessment, uh, it is uh, important when you're doing the sample history, it is important to determine the following. When you're doing a sample history of your secondary assessment, it is important to determine the following. Signs and symptoms. Are the signs and symptoms consistent with an anaphylactic reaction? Do the signs and symptoms indicate a mild, moderate, or severe reaction? Are the signs and symptoms getting progressively worse or better? Allergies. Allergies. Does the patient have a history of allergies to food, medications, plants, insect stings or bites or other prior anaphylactic reaction? If so, then to what? Medications. Does the patient have a prescribed EpiPen? This must be determined early in the assessment for a patient with signs and symptoms of a severe reaction. Of course, with uh, some, someone with a mild uh, reaction, you know, you can determine it later before transport, like they said uh, uh, previously. Has the patient taken any medications to relieve the current signs and symptoms, including over-the-counter medications such as Benadryl? What other medications is the patient taking? Any new medications prescribed? Pertinent past history, you say? Has the patient ever suffered an anaphylactic reaction? Reaction, anaphylactic reaction in the past? If so, how severe was the last reaction? And does the patient have any other significant illnesses? All right. Last oral intake. When was the last time the patient had anything to eat or drink? What did he recently eat or drink? How much food or drink did the patient consume? Events prior to illness. You want to figure this out. You know, events leading up to this is the E of the sample. What was the patient doing prior to the onset of the anaphylactic reaction? What was the patient exposed to and what may have caused the anaphylactic reaction? What was the route of exposure? Injection, ingestion, inhalation or contact? And uh, we are moving on to the signs and symptoms, the signs and symptoms, the signs and, and uh, symptoms of an anaphylactic reaction usually involve the skin, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system, central nervous system, and genitourinary system. The signs and symptoms vary with the severity of the reaction. An anaphylactic reaction can produce serious compromise of respiratory function or circulatory function, shock or hyper or hypo or hypoperfusion or both. All right. If the hypoperfusion or shock is present along with other signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, it is usually usually referred to as as anaphylactic shock. Uh, you would see a decrease in the blood pressure because of what? 
blood volume loss. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep saying that shit to y'all. It's in your brain. Blood loss causes shock. All right. In this case, it's anaphylactic shock because of the situation. You know what it is. You will see a decrease in blood pressure in the patient. Common signs and symptoms of an anaphylactic reaction by body system include the following. Skin, warm, tingling, feeling in the face, mouth, chest, feet, and hands. That's an early symptom. Intense itching, pruritus, pruritus, especially of hands and feet. Hallmark, that's a hallmark symptom of uh, an uh, anaphylactic reaction, meaning that's a very key. Uh, hives, urticaria, which is another hallmark sign. <coughs> oh, damn. Urticaria, killing me. Whew. Flushed or red skin, swelling to the face, lips, neck, hands, feet, and tongue. Cyanosis, severe cases. Now, if you see cyanosis, of course, that's a severe case of uh, an anaphylactic reaction. They're dying. Respiratory system. Patient complains. Uh, patient complaints of a lump in the throat, tightness in the chest, high pitched cough, tachypnea, which is an increased breathing rate. You know that. Labor breathing, noisy breathing, wheezing, strider or crowing, impaired ability to talk or hoarseness, excessive amounts of coughed up mucus, partially or completely occluded airway, difficulty in breathing. All right. And cardiovascular system, tachycardia, which is an increased heart rate, hypotension, which is uh, decreased blood pressure, losing volume, um, irregular pulse, absent radio pulse, uh, severe shock is what that is. Um, central nervous system, increased anxiety, lightheadedness, unresponsiveness, disorientation, restlessness, seizures, headache, I mean, and headache. <laughs> gastrointestinal system, nausea or vomiting, abdominal cramping, diarrhea, difficulty in swallowing, loss of bowel control, uh, and on to the geno, genitourinary system. I always start that out saying geno. It's genito, genitourinary system, urgent need to urinate, cramping of the uterus, all right. Now uh, we have generalized signs and symptoms, just in general. Itchy, watery eyes, runny or stuffy nose, sense of impending doom, complaints of not feeling well, and general weakness or discomfort. Epinephrine auto-injector. Epinephrine is the drug of choice for the treatment of a moderate to severe allergic reaction to insect stings or bites, foods, drugs, and other antigens. The drugs mimic... The responses of the sympathetic nervous system. If you recall from Chairman Maga, epinephrine has four properties. What are the four properties, y'all? Two of them and of the two have the uh, same name. Anyway, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, and beta 2. If you got that correct, you go ahead and have yourself a goddamn plate of cookies and a tall glass of milk on me, pimp. Epinephrine has four properties. Alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1. Beta 2, all right? Alpha 1 causes what? The vessels to constrict. Alpha 2 does what? It regulates the amount of vasoconstriction. You got that? They're working together, of course. That's why they have the same fucking name. Alpha 1 causes the vessels to constrict. Alpha 2 regulates the amount of constriction. All right. Beta 1 increases the heart rate. Force of the contraction, oh, I'm sorry, beta, beta 1 increases the heart rate, force of contraction of the heart, and the speed at which the electrical impulses are carried through the heart, all right, is directly dealing with the heart. Beta 1 increases the heart rate, all right, that's the first thing it does. Next, it forces the uh, contraction of the heart, all right, it forces it to beat, to contract, um, and it 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 the uh it controls the speed at which the electrical impulses are carried through the heart. It controls all those three things which are directly uh they all three have something to do with the heart beating, you know what I mean? It's the same shit anyway. Beta 2 causes the bronchial smooth muscle to dilate. Right? You get that right? And that's directly related with beta 1 2 because <laughs> beta 1 2, I throw your ass off anyway. Beta 1 and beta 2. It causes the uh bronchios 
bronchial smooth muscle to dilate. So, you know, you can, of course, have increased blood flow and the heart can beat faster. They're working together, all right? Alpha 1 does what? It causes the vessels to constrict. Mm. Alpha 2 regulates the amount of vasoconstriction, all right? Beta 1 increases the heart rate, force of the contraction of the heart, and the speed at which the electrical impulses are carried through the heart. Beta 2, along with its beta 1 partner, causes the bronchial smooth muscle to dilate, all right? All right, recall from earlier in this chapter that three of the major responses to the chemical mediators by the body causing the life-threatening anaphylactic condition are an increase in capillary permeability, vasodilation, and bronchoconstriction. They done told us that like 10 times. They're beating it in your brain. Get that. Get it. Got it. Epinephrine's alpha properties cause vasoconstriction and tighten the capillaries reversing the vasodilation and increased capillary permeability experienced by the anaphylactic patient. All right? That's why it's first. It's alpha. It's first. Alpha 1 and 2. It does that because it's directly taking on that anaphylactic reaction. All right? All right. The beta 2 properties cause bronchodilation, reversing the bronchoconstriction. Huh? The beta-1 properties will be responsible for side effects from administration. Also, epinephrine has a direct antihistamine effect. Antihistamine. So it's the one that's telling anti... I mean, the histamine to calm the fuck down. Remember, histamine is the mediator that's causing your body to go crazy. Like, hey, we got to get... We got to we gotta shut this shit down. We got to take care of us. All right? The epinephrine comes in and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. All right? Also, epinephrine has a direct antihistamine effect, reducing the effects of histamine. You can see why epinephrine is a dr drug of choice in anaphylaxis. Yes, sir. Because that's what you need. You need something to regulate that histamine. That's what epinephrine does for you. All right. Through the alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two properties. All right. Or, um, the body's response to epinephrine is rapid. Within seconds, the patient will begin to feel relief. However, there's it, there it is. And there's always a however in that comma. So cute. The duration of the drug's effectiveness is short, only about 10 to 20 minutes. Epinephrine comes packaged in a disposable delivery system for self-administration. Common sy systems prescribed to patients are the EpiPen auto-injector and the Twinject, Twinject. Each is an auto-injector, which has a spring-activated, concealed needle that is designed to deliver a precise dose of epinephrine when activated. The Twinject contains two doses of epinephrine in one device. Oh, okay. That's the one that's, yeah, more bang for your buck. Both epinephrine auto-injectors, the EpiPen and the Twinject, come in two different doses. The 0 0.3 milligram dose of epinephrine is for patients weighing 60, 66 pounds or greater. Okay, okay. Uh, 0 0.3 milligrams is for pers patients weighing 66 pounds or greater. All right. The injector for infants and children up to 66 pounds delivers 0.15 milligrams of, of epinephrine. A child who weighs more than 66 pounds may have an adult epinephrine auto-injector because a single dose may not completely reverse the effects of an anaphylactic reaction. The physician may prescribe more than more than one injector or the twinject device. If the patient does not have the twinject device, it is important to determine if the patient has more than one injector so you can take it along and be prepared to deliver a second injection. The auto injector is simply is, <laughs> is simple to use. It is activated by pressing it against the patient's thigh. The pressure releases a spring activator plunger, pushing the concealed needle into the thigh muscle and injecting a dose of the drug. If a second dose is needed by the twin jack device, it is necessary to unscrew the gray cap. Hold the blue hub at the needle base and pull the syringe from the barrel. Slide the collar off the plunger. Yeah, this makes sense. Insert the needle into the thigh and push the plunger all the way down. Remove the needle and dispose of the device in a biohazard puncture-resistant container. No precise location on the thigh is necessary, but the lateral portion of the thigh midway between the hip and knee is preferred. Smack dab in the middle, all right? Side of the thigh, 
go below the butt cheek, side of the butt cheek. Don't go all the way down to, to where the knee is, kind of in the middle. Meet them right there in the middle. Stab, wham, bam. Uh, if it is too difficult to remove the clothing. Oh, my bad, my bad. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, midway between the hip. Do not inject the epinephrine into a vein or into the buttocks. It is preferable to remove clothing from the site of injection. If it is too difficult to remove the clothing or if the situation requires immediate administration, the injection can be given directly through the clothing. All right. So, yeah, do what you got to do. All right. Um, and with that being said, y'all. That's the end, my friend, of uh, anaphylactic reactions. You need to listen to this uh, over and over again until you got it down packed. This anaphylactic shit ain't hard. You just got to get it, man. Fuck that test. It ain't nothing. You got it, champ. You got it, princess. Just do it, man. Do what you got to do. A champ and a princess is not the opposite of each other, but it don't matter. Don't judge me. Uh, study, study, study again, and you too can learn like me.